Money FM 89.3, best of weekends. One of the funniest stories or most unusual stories or most ex- unexpected stories of this week in Singapore was when Speaker of Parliament and MP for Marine Parade GRC, Tan Chuan Jin, inadvertently found himself on Tinder. And to have uh, a little bit more background and information and response to this story now, we have the man himself, uh, Speaker Tan Chuan Jin. Welcome to Weekend Morning. Such a pleasure to have you with us. And I think you better debunk this pretty quickly because a lot of people are wondering what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you could just tell us, maybe you could just tell us the, the story. What actually happened this week to our Speaker of Parliament? <laughs> so I think firstly, I need to declare that uh, I've never been on Tinder. <laughs> so I don't know how it works exactly, but I was told that there's a lot of swiping left and right and whatever. So someone on Instagram uh, messaged me with a screenshot of uh, my apparent profile on Tinder. Uh. Apparently the name was Ben Tan and <laughs> ben um, Tan. told me that, yeah, so when they reported apparently Tinder and I was quite tickled by it. I mean, there, there have been various impersonations over time, right, on Instagram, yeah. on Facebook, but I think this is the first I know of from Tinder. So, <laughs> so yes, I was just curious how many swipes, right swipes. Right. You, were, you were right to point out that it wasn't you that was actually on there. It was somebody who – and it's actually quite a serious topic, right, of that of, of online scams oh, it is, it is. And, and online – you know, people doing things online they're not supposed to, in this case, borrowing your picture uh, and your likeness uh, for that. Uh, so – but it but it did – you handled it very well, which is the part, the part I think Neil and I – Neil brought this up to, to yeah, I mean, about I, having you I, on. Yeah, I mean I saw – saw your response to it on Facebook and I just thought it was great. You know, you tackled it head on. You you, you tackled it in a very lighthearted way. Yeah. But I must say, as a PR advisor, if you like, maybe you don't <laughs> help yourself because you do give yourself or, or someone like that a lot of opportunities because you have a lot of nice photos of you post-exercise. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like the guy not didn't have a lot of photos. Fo- yeah, I know, but they did. There was a lot of photos for the guy to choose from. So tender, uh, tender, yeah. appropriate photos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, I think the more serious message is that impersonation is real. It can happen to any of one of us. And yeah. you know, in crime in Singapore, we say low crime doesn't mean no crime. In fact, crime generally has increased, but the traditional crime as we know it actually has decreased. But Actually, online scams have increased quite significantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether is it business type scams, e-commerce ripoff, uh, dubious messages from some officials from certain countries in Africa or wherever it may be, and love scams. Uh, a lot of money is lost as a result of that. I, I, as an MP on the ground, I meet residents who come forward to appeal for help, and sometimes they go into six figures. I know a few have taken loans, have borrowed money. A depleted a bank account to pay off love yeah. scams. Some are credit card scams, and it's really quite it's really quite worrying because when you look at the profile of the individuals, they are people that you may know, educated, and you wouldn't expect them uh, to be ripped off, but they have. No. So it's something as a public message. We really need to be careful uh, because it is on the rise. No, you and especially abs- because all of us are online in some shape and form. Yeah, you're absolutely right. On the same day as, as your Tinder story, I was called from a representative from my bank. And as I joked online, I knew it wasn't a representative mm. from my bank mm. because if anyone has ever tried to get a representative from their bank, it's very, very hard <laughs> to get a human voice. Indeed. So that told me straight away it was a it was a fake call, but yeah. it was a very convincing call. You know, the men, the message was in impeccable English. It alluded to the fact that I had a problem with my bank account. It sounded very, Mm. very plausible. And it was from my actual bank, which is worrying in itself. It wasn't from a rival bank or one of the other big banks in Singapore. I can completely see why someone would easily possibly give their bank details in return. It's a very serious issue, isn't it? No, clearly it works. That's why they keep trying. Obviously, many of us who are more savvy, we will put it down or and so on. But there will be those who who get let on. And it's worrying because it's it's on the rise. Uh, so the police force has set up in 2019 an SPF anti-scam center. Uh, so they've had some successes. But it's mm-hmm. not easy because a lot of these are domiciled overseas. So once the funds go, yeah. it's very difficult. To we had, uh, so the, the best mm-hmm. thing to do is raise awareness and just be, I guess, a bit more kiasu, mm-hmm. which is you know one of our traits. So be kiasu on this front and, and be extra careful.
and never divulge key information online or over the phone. Just make it doubly sure first before we ever uh, divulge those details. We're speaking with the Speaker of Singapore Parliament and MP for a Marine Parade GRC, Tan Chuan Jin, talking about cyber theft, cyber crime, uh, scams that have happened online and uh, finding himself unwittingly at the end of one of those this week and appearing on a site that he has clearly stated he never uses, which is Tinder. But very fine oh, photographs yeah. nonetheless. <laughs> but very good photographs of him showing up. You know, it's interesting. Oh, yes, I really to me and yeah. they've informed me that they're taking me down. Um, I did ask them so how many sites I got <laughs> what did I, I'm curious to know, and you don't have to name names, but did you hear from any of your colleagues in Parliament? Did anyone reach out to you and comment on this case once it hit social media? And what did they say? One or two, yeah. I'm quite curious. <laughs> were people sort <laughs> of taking, taking it in stride, or were they having a laugh about yeah, it? Or? I mean, I, think, I don't think it's a bit of first. I don't think it'd be the last. And it yeah. will happen to various personalities. I think the key thing is that, you know, be careful. And if you see someone looking like she's swiping on your profile, it's not me. <laughs> you, you know, our, our helper actually uh, had a case uh, several years ago where somebody had contacted her from abroad and got very close to convincing her to send this uh, mm. person a couple hundred dollars. Uh, and it was a small amount. What but was you the could, angle? Uh, the angle was yeah. he ha- he developed an online relationship with her uh, and was going to come and visit Singapore from another country. And then he did a transit stop, allegedly, the day before he was arriving in Singapore. And she had she had told us this was happening. And, you know, of course, we're fine. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it's your personal life. You my, can do what you want anytime. Is that they, are, they are basically trying. I mean, I see that popping up on my Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. And I guess, you know, sometimes I love scams, right? Yep. Individuals who are lonely or I guess whatever, you could say that, may yeah. respond, yep. and then they begin to latch onto that. And I suspect they have different styles and approaches depending on how people respond mm. and well, begin to target. I think people who are vulnerable. Well, this one was very relationship. This one was very clever because the 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 man involved that was coming to see our helper emailed her and, or called her and said he had gotten stopped at customs in KL. He had a layover flight in in Malaysia, mm. and he needed. $200 to process his visa quickly right. to come into Singapore. So he never even came or, you know, apparently never even came into Singapore, but was uh, getting money to be sent to a bank account. She told us and we, of course, said, no, this is a scam. We're not going to do that. Uh, so we didn't do mm-hmm. it. And she, yeah. of course, cut off all contact. But but this is the kind of thing. It can seem relatively innocent or believable to some people. It, it is, especially as we get more of our elderly to be on digital platforms, which yeah. is great because it opens up a lot of space for them to engage with family and friends, but they are also particularly vulnerable. Yeah. So along with our digital ambassadors, as we try to help them get online, I think a lot of it is also education. So do look out for our parents and our mm. older relatives. But, you know, a lot of folks falling for it are not necessarily that's ones. that's Actually, a key point yeah brilliant. yeah i'm glad you raised that point because sometimes we can be a little bit patronizing and, and assume that it's the less tech savvy and and glenn has just reminded me of the, the closest i ever got duped was when i moved apartments and i put up some of my furniture and i was this close glenn um put up some of my furniture on one of these carousel type sites mm. you know and someone wrote back and said they wanted to buy the furniture and we went through a very, very long process. And at the very, very end, the guy said, I need you to send me the, the processing fee, $50, $100. And I swear I was one click away from doing it, yeah. me. So yeah. this idea that it just affects you know, the elderly or the vulnerable or the less tech savvy, they, they're very, very persistent and very tenacious and very original sometimes, mm. Mr. Tan. I, I think that's something we have to bear in mind. It can be any site any digital avenue, any way they can find a way in. Yeah, it, it obviously works. And I guess they have a lot of practice, a lot of different approaches. So they, they, they I guess, uh, work on your fears. They work on your greed. Um, you know, you work on your loneliness. Uh, and I guess they're looking out for indicators of the different Mm. Uh, kind of responses that you may provide. But I think the key thing really is um, no matter what we do with the authorities, I think the best defense really is our own uh, awareness and just helping to raise that awareness with, with folks to just really be careful. Don't, as a rule, don't divulge unless you are doubly, triply sure. 
Yeah. yeah. One of our listeners yeah. has just written in and said that the only reason you were targeted is because you are so popular <laughs> in Singapore. Mike that, Ung, that was Mike Ung, our listener. Is Mike Ung, following yeah. up with, you'll never walk alone. So we know what that reference is all about. Yeah, so yeah. apparently well, you're... Sure been quite up in yeah. this couple. <laughs> you're, you're a victim of your own popularity. There you go. We're but speaking I, with uh, Tan Chuan Jin, the Speaker of the Singapore Parliament and MP for a Marine Parade a GRC. Uh, you and your family are very much uh, thinking of, in line with trying to help those less fortunate. You, t- you mentioned, let's work with our seniors to make sure that they don't get scammed. Yeah. While, while you're here, uh, Tan Chuan Jin, yesterday, you'll be very pleased to know that my daughter spent an entire day at Willing Hearts, uh, serving up rice and vegetables for the less fortunate in society. And she came back with all kinds of interesting uh, discoveries and, and, and take-home messages, namely that she had no idea that Willing Hearts alone provides 10,000 meals a day. That's 10,000 meals a day to the less fortunate in Singapore. And while she was there, you know, uh, shoveling out spoonfuls of rice into the, into the containers, she discovered from some of the staff, the volunteers, that this service, this priceless voluntary service, has never been in, more in demand because of the situation of COVID. And I, I just mm-hmm. wondered, because you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're very, very prominent on social media with uh, social welfare groups, voluntary organizations, charitable causes. I make no secret of the fact that I admire the fact that you are so vocal about these issues. Where are we at with our volunteer, our charitable organizations, our social welfare groups in this pandemic? I'm sure they probably need more help and support than ever. Yes, well, the challenges that communities face uh, remains the same, but I think with COVID, it makes it a lot more pronounced. Uh, Raising money isn't easy, but actually, during the COVID period, I think we've been able to raise a fair bit of funds from the public. So that's that's really great, especially for the COVID-related funds. But for the existing funds that continue to service the community, they remain uh, critical. So we do ask the public in any shape and form to continue to contribute because it makes a lot of difference. In terms of volunteering time, it's a bit challenging, obviously, because of uh, safe distancing measures and all that. It becomes a lot more uh, difficult, I think, to accommodate some of this. But in whatever shape and form we're able to help, Mm. I think it would go a very long way. Obviously, there are many different approaches. I'm very familiar with Willing Hearts. I worked with them to provide them the present location uh, where they are. Uh, the approach that they take is a bit more expansive, meaning that whoever wants, they can come and take, regardless of whether they're needed or otherwise. So philosophically, that's the approach they take, and we can respect that. Uh, like, for example, I work with Willing Hearts, and I provide meals every single day of the year for my residents who need them. Mm. Yeah. A couple hundred meals in my area, and, and I collect them, and then we distribute them to those who may need it. Um, but we also work with other different, uh, different initiatives that are really quite interesting. So that we also don't want to be wasteful, because obviously when... Sometimes it's too easily accessible in a way. Do you then get abused in some ways? So it's so my approach is that if you're not sure, help. It doesn't matter. You mm-hmm. know, even if you're taking it for a ride, people don't really need or taking it. That's okay. Yeah. But as we become a lot more needs driven, a lot more clearer about what the needs are, then let's begin to structure that. Let's begin to collaborate and talk so that the help can be more effective. Because what you want is to help individuals to get on their feet and not just you know inundate folks who just help and. You also don't want to cripple someone by overly doing it. So let's see how best to structure it. But the key thing is just come forward and help. The needs are there. They have not gone away. And I think the difficult times haven't really come on board yet. You know, with all the different government schemes, they've helped a lot of companies to sustain. But as some of these schemes begin to ease off, and companies who haven't pivoted, who still have cash flow problems, you would have some employment challenges coming forward. So let's let's really chip in and be prepared to help out in whatever way we can. Yeah, we'll but be- the key thing I think the message also is let's pay attention, especially with Chinese New Year coming forward. Let's really pay attention to the directions given in terms of safe distancing measures and so on because we've seen how the situation exploded yeah. all over the world. And when it becomes bad, actually has a knock-on effect on the well-being as well. So actually what we're doing on the COVID front, each and every one of us will help to prevent a worse off uh, sort of welfare, uh, well-being situation for everyone else. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Speaker Tan, about 
about the upcoming festive season, uh, Lunar New Year, Chinese New Year, uh, because we had it in our news uh, this morning, and Neil and I have been talking about it already, uh, this new government, I don't know if you call it a recommendation or a rule, or I'm not sure what the level of that is, but uh, no more than uh, obviously eight people uh, visiting your homes, and then we, we are not supposed to go and visit more than two homes at any given uh, any given day. Uh, when, when we look at these rules uh, that have been suggested now by the government, government, uh, what do we need to do to make sure that people actually really take them to heart and really make sure that they follow them for the good of all, right? Because we have done a great job, mm-hmm. as you rightly mentioned, great job. Of, of getting our house in order in, here in Singapore, uh, thanks to consistent messaging and, and guidance by the government and people willing to uh, play along with it. But we're not out of the woods yet. We are still seeing some yeah, uh, yeah. some yeah. little uh, spikes here and there and some, some clusters breaking out here and there. What do we do, especially in this festive season to have fun to so, honor so the holiday a, but to stay safe yeah it, it's a very tricky virus because unlike say uh, SARS right which was very deadly and in in situations where viruses are a lot more lethal actually it kill off the host and so it, it you know it, SARS pretty much burned itself out and disappeared and yeah. I'm not sure where it is today but this one is contagious but it doesn't fatality rate isn't quite as high, but because of numbers, it can inundate your healthcare system. Mm. I think it's important for us to realize that I, I don't think you can get zero cases. Right. The important thing is to minimize the numbers to make sure that you don't overwhelm the healthcare system. You've got to make sure that whatever cases you do have, you're able to trace them and then to ring fence. That's why the trace together approach and the rest of it, the initiatives are really, really important. But a lot of it is just basic stuff. I mean, we find that even um, like flu, normal influenza, the cases have dropped because mm. of mask wearing. And just a simple step like that, I think it's important for us to remember it's not just about ourselves. It's not just about our own freedoms and our own convenience. We are protecting our family members. We're protecting our friends. And it is a collective team effort. When everyone wears masks, everyone keeps a distance, everyone minimizes contact, it lowers the probability of spread. And it's, it's all risk management uh, sort of an approach, right? The more we're able to risk manage, the lower the probability you will have cases, but the numbers will hopefully be at a level where we can manage. When we don't bother, and especially when large groups gather, and that's where you see it begins to spark up and spread, and when you can no longer begin to contain because you can't trace where it goes, and that when it can rapidly goes out of hand because it's so contagious. Mm. And we've seen that some elements of that last year when before we fully realized the extent of its um, uh, ability to spread uh, during Chinese New Year last year, a year ago. And, and the best example, Korea, Hong Kong, Japan, that seems to have been out of the woods and suddenly because of nightlife, because of the holiday period, and people just really you know ignored and wanted to celebrate the, the newfound freedom. And suddenly once it spreads and it's out there in the community in a big way, it, it goes out of hand. And the only way actually almost seems like lockdown which is what a lot of these countries are embarking on. And that has a big ramification on economic well-being, jobs, companies. So in a way, by foregoing some of these flexibilities and freedom to do the things that we would like to do, it allows us that freedom to still enjoy what we are able to do today, which many other societies are grappling with. So look at it as really, a, a, this is a true Team Singapore effort. I mean, all of us really need to come on board and look out for our vulnerable because, you know, even for those folks who have recovered, even young people, they have found quite serious long-term issues for some yeah. of them. And for the elderly, it's potentially fatal. So we're not out of the woods, but as long as we pay attention to the measures and mm. be vigilant, mm. I think we can deal with it. Step by step. Yeah, I say this quite objectively and uh, rather proudly, if I may. I think Singapore, society, government, the people doing a magnificent job so far, a magnificent job in the last year. And it would be a shame that we're, as we're this close, we're this right. close, yeah. just a few more months and, and hopefully we'll be there. I must ask you finally, I, I read, as I always do, your, your Facebook posts uh, with interest and I thought you wrote... Some uh, some very measured posts on the recent American presidency inauguration. Uh, just ask you what I, I, you can say whatever you like. What were your thoughts? What were your thoughts on the uh, inauguration? Well, you know, it's a part of the, part of the democratic process. Um, people will choose. Obviously, we know Trump has also a lot of populist support. So I think a lot of the concerns and issues and I guess the division that exists within their society remains. And you know, every society has to decide for themselves how they want to grapple with the issues. I think for us, 
we wish our friends well. I think that's the most important thing. America, obviously, is a is a critical uh, superpower that has such a big impact on so many things, taking leadership on the COVID-19 fight, global trade, uh, just peace and stability. And of course, everyone's looking out for the Sino-US relations. I, and we wish them well. But I think the lesson learned, I mean, as, as always, I find is what does it mean for us in terms of what happens there? Right. And what's kind of scary, I guess, it's how media, social media can begin to affect our views correctly or otherwise. And, and it's no longer just, oh, you know, freedom of speech and everyone can say whatever they want and it's just online. It translates into real actions mm. and ramifications, as we saw with what happened on Capitol Hill. And of course, there were other incidences, instances in, in past couple of years where agitation online translated into actually real conflict and, and actions in, in, physical, in the physical space. And that's what's happening the world over. So we need to decide how do we want to approach this whole space. On the one hand, I understand we all would like our space to say what we want to say, but it's no longer without consequence. Hmm. And those consequences can be not trivial at all. And we see that happening. I mean, in a developed democracy like the US, in the UK with Brexit, depending on what your views are, you know, and now we begin to see the minutiae of details, right? As how trade begins to impact, how as trucks begin to carry stuff, trade and into the UK because of change in rules every second, every half second, delay, you know, mm-hmm. it's a snowball effect. And, and the real world can't be sort of shrunk in this too long being read, one liner, one Instagram post. I, I wish the world was a lot simpler than that. But mm-hmm. we like to, I guess, condense everything down to this very simple thing. Um, and people do, politicians do, sometimes deliberate or otherwise. And you can actually convey very wrong perspectives and impressions and get people agitated and angry. But that's the world we live in today. And mm. we see that happening. But as a society, we just need to ask ourselves, how do we want to approach this? Um, not, not straightforward. It's not simple. But, um, and we need to ask ourselves, where are the boundaries you know, that we want to set for ourselves? Yeah. But the view is very, very greatly. So it's, um, but it's something that I think not just us, but any society out there needs to grapple with. Thank you for your comments on that, and, and, and thanks for being on with us today. We're going to let you go. We know you have a big day uh, uh, plan, busy day, but we really appreciate you coming on to speak with us, Neil and I both uh, coming on uh, Money FM weekend mornings. Thanks, Glenn.